while. As he said, uh, I'm Bill Snow. I'm responsible for engineering at Owen Lab. Owen Lab is a uh, small organization, about 20 engineers, and we're a nonprofit based in Menlo Park, California. As a nonprofit, um, we've formed for the public good, and our role is to be able to transform, help, service, help transform service provider networks using SDN and NFE concepts. And it was important to be in a, a neutral role so that we could uh, more easily work uh, with the operators and vendors and not be uh, motivated by any particular uh, profit motive. And so uh, we've been doing that now for, f for five years. And um, I want to share a little bit of uh, what we've done with around Onus and Cord today. Okay, so I'll start with a little bit of background. In case you don't know about Onos and you don't know about Cord, I'll just give one or two slides on each. Okay. Onos is a network operating system. It has been built by operators for operators, and from the start, it was targeted to be a very highly available, scalable, highly performant system, one that would be appropriate for carriers. Nothing existed at that time in terms of controllers, and so... Uh, we knew that there was going to be a need for this, and we set out to uh, develop such a controller. And, uh, and so what you'll see here is Onos runs, it, it achieves a HA scale and performance by running as a clustered system. So you can run three, five, seven servers, and they all work together in a cluster. And they, they, sh they shard the network so that you can uh, very easily scale to the number of devices in your network. Um, it's a real operating system. It provides real services. It has very, very strong uh, layering and a set of abstractions. Abstractions to simplify how you write applications so that at the northbound. Also, very strong abstractions at the southbound to make it easy to add devices into the network. Cord started as a use case on Onos. Onos was built out through operator use cases, working with our operator partners. Cord was one that attempted to really make a dent in the operational costs of AT&T's network because AT&T alone has almost 5,000 central offices. They're like museums. They're fun to visit if you've been in networking as many years as I have. They have equipment that you haven't seen for 15 years, all still operational. And our goal was to apply... SDN, NFE, and cloud to those central offices so that we could bring cloud agility and data center economics into those central offices. And Cord's architecture starts first with picking some type of access. We started with residential, optical access. And a big part of it is disaggregating it. So not just taking the vertically integrated expensive boxes as they are and putting them in, but asking where do the functions belong and how do we commoditize that access. So building, in this, in, in this case, uh, a commodity type of access, running the what used to run on those vertically integrated devices for control, running that on servers as VNFs here. Then those servers being interconnected in a data center-like fabric, loose mind fabric, that fabric itself being constructed of white box switches. It's called Trellis by itself. It's a very useful open source project done in collaboration with the Open Network Foundation. The physical underlay and the overlays that, where the VNFs communicate, that's all controlled through Onos. The VNFs are orchestrated through something called XOS, which is everything is a service operating system. And again, this abstracts how you want to be able to start with services and have those services deployed down onto a data center infrastructure. So that's what XOS does. We started with residential, but this is a general architecture. It also addresses the mobile space and the enterprise space. And I'll show you some examples of POCs and field trials that we're doing with those. Okay, so that's the background. Here's what I hope that you'll be able to take away from today's presentation. First, Onos and Cord, we've had major growth in the last year, and this is the fourth year I've been at layer one, two, three, and just like the conference has grown, 
these projects have grown like wildfire. Onos is the only control plane that supports both incremental as well as disruptive SDN. And you may know we started with disruptive. And then last, Onos and Cord are powering operator networks. And we'll talk about some of the use cases for that. We're very fortunate to have partners uh, like these. We have seven leading service provider partners. And the service providers make Onos and Cord solutions relevant. We also have 10 of the leading vendors for those service providers. And they make the solutions real and ready for deployment. And our more, most recent service providers have been added, have been Comcast, and so now into the cable space, Google, very interesting, and Verizon. So we have a really good mix of service providers that we're working with. Collaborators, these are the collaborators for Onos. And you'll see there's quite a wide range of types of organizations that are collaborating with us. The collaborating organizations help grow the community and grow the impact, whereas the partners pay and support the engineering team at Owen Lab. The collaborators uh, do not pay, but they commit resources and they, they commit deliverables that bring value into the ecosystem. These are the cord collaborators. And if you note, between the Onos collaborators and the cord collaborators, we've now added another dozen service providers to this as well. So all in all, working with around 20 service providers on, on different solutions at the moment. This has been the growth of our membership, both the partners and collaborators. We have another 30 organizations that are in the pipeline. To become a collaborator is not a matter of putting a logo up on a website. So collaborators go through an evaluation process. They propose a project to us. We review it with our partners. If that project brings value into the ecosystem, if that project is aligned with where the operators want to go, then we bring those collaborators on board. Okay, a little bit of other news since last year at layer one, two, three. So in addition to the new partners and collaborators, Sienna and Huawei have both come out with commercial Onos controllers. So now you have a place to go uh, in a Red Hat-like fashion to be able to get the support that you need as, as an operator uh, to roll out a system like this. On the cord side, Sienna and Redisys are commercial cord integrators. We've initiated quite a bit of work with these standards organizations here because there's a huge opportunity to work with standards to find new models of evolving open source software together with standards. We've done four additional releases of Onos. We release quarterly. We've done eight now since the project was started. Cord moved from being a use case on Onos, Onos itself being a Linux Foundation project, to being its own Linux Foundation collaborative project. And we had the first open source release of Cord recently. OK, takeaway number two. Onos is really the only control plane that supports both incremental and disruptive SDN. And let me tell you what that means. We think of incremental SDN as taking your existing control plane, a distributed control plane, usually a very complex control plane, adding some amount of automation on top of that. Absolutely, there's value to do that. But that does not bring the promise of where you want to get to from an operational perspective with SDN and NFV. This is disruptive SDN. This is using centralized configuration, configuration management applications. It's using programmable data planes like P4, OpenFlow. That brings a disruptive value proposition. This is a very difficult uh, undertaking to be able to support the type, the scale of these networks and the type of availability in a disruptive sense. But that's where we started. Once you've done that, you can absolutely add the ability to do the incremental SDN. I'll talk about how we do that. So to be disruptive, we have to have the right architecture. 
Okay, architecture you don't add as a feature afterwards. Okay, you have to start knowing the, what your target is in these situations. And you also have to start with the knowledge that you're going to abstract out this function. You're not going to just let the application continue to go down and twiddle every bit through IO, IO control functions. Okay? We need to make it easier for applications to be programmed. Incremental SDN, everybody's got, a, got an existing network. Right? What good is it if we have this, this new network but we can't operate with the existing one? Okay, so toward that end, we have an extensive number of southbound uh, protocols and adapters that are supported in on us. Also, the dynamic configuration capabilities, whether that's through modeling with Yang and NetConf protocol, or whether that's through OVSDB. And as you've heard through other talks today, much of this is being deployed in data, data center-like models, right? DevOps models, right? So we need microservices. We need to have very good capabilities to interconnect ONOS with other applications that maybe aren't inside the same machine as ONOS. So towards that end, message buses, uh, Google RPC, a number of mechanisms to provide that system integration. And then being able to provide model-based services, whether that's through Tosca, whether that's through Yang. But the ease of being in your operator system of defining a service and having that create a model or taking a standard model and feeding that in so that the right things can be done in the network. Here's an example. I know it's a very complicated slide. Don't, I don't expect you to try and consume it. But the point of the slide is that today exists a number of traffic engineered networks. And they may be disparate networks. And you have to have a way to be able to manage those as one. And, and there's a standard way to do that called abstraction and control of TE networks. And you can see the links here from uh, IETF. The importance of a solution like this is it's multi-vendor, it's multi-domain, it's a standard, it scales, it helps you scale a network, it helps you add in domains that are different, right, and operate them as one. And it gives you a migration mechanism. I mentioned modeling and dynamic configuration. We have Yang service models at northbound. We have Yang device models at southbound. We have a tool chain. And a lot of this has been brought in through uh, tremendous support from Huawei and additional companies in the community. A very good tool chain allows drivers to be updated without having to reprogram and recompile and reload drivers. Trying to get to the goal where you can just bring your device, a standard model, and quickly add it with just some business logic. And we'll be doing some use case examples of this soon that will become public. One of the first ones is an L3 VPN service. And we'll also be bringing a number of vendors in to show how they add their devices to that. Disruptive SDN support ensures that the operator is going to achieve the transformational business value that they want to. But the incremental SDN support known us ensures that they have a smooth transition to move there. And a, say most importantly, a platform that's only focused on incremental SDN can't deliver the value of disruptive SDN. It won't get there. Let's talk about some of the use cases for Onos and Cord. And I list them here with SDN IP. There's a lot around IP optical. And then the different versions of Cord. Okay? And, E cord is applied to enterprise, R cord to residential, M cord to mobile. A cord is about analytics. This is a picture of our global ONOS controlled footprint right now in the research and education networks. And it's growing every day. But this is a production network. Yeah, it's, it's maybe not a Verizon or an AT&T production network, but it's a production network run by the research and education institutions. And they don't have to use legacy routers to have their level three services. Huge, huge benefit to the operator. IP optical has been a use case from the beginning for Onos. It continues to evolve. This is a slide that uh, talks about some of the uh, benefits that we demonstrated early on at ONS, where you can have applications like on-demand bandwidth, advanced uh, restoration techniques, um, optimization of multiple layers. Those applications can run on Onos. Onos takes care of 
the different domains of IP and optical and how you connect into those different domains. So an application doesn't have to know about that. The, the uh, YouTube link there, you can see a demonstration of it. Additional deployments in the research and education space, software-defined exchanges for level two and level three services, bandwidth on demand happening in Europe with Jaunt. In Korea, demonstrating ONF's uh, transport API and open config support. So those are in process happening this year. Along the way, when you look at the court architecture and you're disaggregating the access function, you start asking yourself, well, why not disaggregate the WAN side as well? And this started a disaggregated Rotom project. And through that, you take the pieces of the Rotom apart, and you can see some of them listed here with the wave selective switches and the MUX sponders, transponders, and so forth. And if you do that, you have the opportunity, instead of, of buying a huge chunk of optics, which is very expensive, right? You can right size that. You can choose different vendors. You can do piecewise upgrades. And you can have software driven integration. So, there are many benefits to doing this. And you can see the vendors that have worked together to provide this solution. Disaggregated Rotom will be used as part of an NTT field trial over the next six to nine months. You can see the map of where it is in Japan here, and you can see where they're using some of the disaggregated transport devices. And that's a Nonos controlled network. eCord, if you have cord running in central offices and you take a metro area, for example, that might have four or five, then eCord ties those together and brings you the functions that you might be used to with MEF, your ELAN, your ELINE services and lets you coordinate through a centralized location, the ability to request L2, L3 VPNs and overlays. Residential cord is where cord started and was our first proof case with a simple CPE connecting through GPON to a device created by Celestica, designed by AT&T. We show the different service portals so that you can see what a customer gets. You can see how AT&T accesses their capabilities. And you can see how services are added by other vendors, like Akamai. The same demonstration is running downstairs. It's running on a data center in a box from Canonical, an orange box. It's the perfect color for where we are. So please stop by, take a look at the demonstration. It's a great demo. If cord exploded in the last year, mobile cord is going to double explode. With 5G coming and with the types of things that we want to do in 5G, Cord provides a perfect environment to try out many of these concepts. The roadmap that we're going on, which is driven by SK Telecom working together with AT&T and Verizon and a number of um, other vendors, but they're the three that are primarily driving it. Showing soon disaggregated and virtualized RAN, the disaggregated and virtualized EPC together slicing in both the RAN and the EPC analytics in both, and some very interesting mobile edge services around public safety and mobile health. We want to be able to get a mobile cord set up into as many people's hands as we can. Just like Canonical did with their orange box, we'd like to have a, a mini M cord. Okay, so, so we're going to put 10 of these together, get them in people's hands, and really drive uh, some of the applications and demonstrations forward. So very simple, you know, five U, a couple of cavium radio heads, and you've got a great demonstration. I mentioned analytics cord, and this is a project that is part of the core part of cord because it applies to everything. And what it allows you to do is instrument anything you want to instrument and then feed the events, analytics, into this subsystem. You can use 
closed loop real time to control your network if you want. Or you can put those in a time series database and do, do things later with those. But it's a fundamental part of Cord is being able to be able to instrument things really well so you can not only control it but also understand and see what's what's happening. The partners have uh, dozens of POCs, field trials, and so forth that are moving forward. Uh, Rate assist with cord um, trials and Huawei with, uh, they just announced their new controller based on Onos. And Huawei has some, some very interesting applications that are all end to end and not only multiple controllers uh, peering, but also the ability to have hierarchical control. Sienna with both Cord and Onos commercial support. So visit their booths, go talk to them about the work that they're doing uh, with these solutions. I think you'll find it very interesting. Here's the three takeaways again. I'll leave you with these. A lot of growth in Onos and Cord in the last year. We support both incremental and disruptive SDN, and we power operator networks. Here's some links for additional information. And I hope to see you in the community, and I thank you very much for your attention.